Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a string down the center of the chassis. The center line of the chassis is scribed, so I have some marks I can go by. Tie the string onto a jack stand or something heavy. Okay, once you get tied to your jack stands, pull it tight, line it up with the marks on the chassis. Okay, once you've got your uh, String set up on the uh, center line. You set up another string. Okay, this string. I'm going to run close to the wheels and tires and set the height to where it's right about in the middle. Pull it tight. I'm not so tight that you knocking your jack stands over, but snug. Now you can measure from your center string out to the outside string and set up the parallel line on the outside of the car. So you gotta kind of be pretty delicate here. Try not to move anything. If you had two people, it'd be more ideal for this. And just move these jack stands in and out so you get a parallel line to the center line. There we go. Now you can simply take your tape measure and measure from the rim, assuming the rim is straight, out to the string. and get a measurement, and then measure at the back of the rim to the string and get a measurement, and then you can set your toe. And that's just about straight forward. Let me double check my uh, steering rack, make sure it's centered. It is. Generally, I don't use a tape measure. I use this machinist rule because it's got much finer increments on it. It's got a little bit of toe in it right now. 
So I just come down. Loosen up my jams. And then give the tie rod a little twist. I want about a sixteenth of an inch toe out on this wheel. Same on the other side, so I'll have a total of eight. And that's it, right there. So, actually getting a little ahead of myself with the toe. I've got to check my camber, see if it's where I want it to be before I finalize the toe. This is a camber caster gauge. It has a little point here, a magnetic uh, face. This point will center on the spindle, center the spindle, and this little uh, magnetic will suck it into uh, the face of the hub. And then you've got a scale here. You can do caster and camber. So I've got to get the dust cap off. And this directly reads camber. And it's reading three degrees, which is fine for a starting spot. Might be a little too much. Check it on the other side. side is two degrees. So I think I'm going to make the uh, driver's side two degrees to match. To do that, you take shims out of the upper control arm. So while you're doing this work, you want to make sure you don't knock into your strings. And then just to be safe, check your strings again for center. Etc. Since the chassis is sitting on blocks, I can loosen this up a control arm. There's no spring tension because there's no spring. This is just the weight of the hub assembly and wheel pushing on it. But if this was sitting at ride height, without blocks under it and a spring on it, of course, if I undid these bolts, the whole thing would sprung out on you and make a mess. I'm going to move one shim at a time. Shim out. Got to check my uh, steering shaft. Make sure it's centered again. Check all my strings. Make sure the center strings on its line. Let's check the camber again on this wheel.
Here we go, just a hair over two. About the same as the other side. Call that good for now. All right, we need to check the toe again. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna check my uh, strings. Make sure they haven't moved. Looks good. Now since I've uh, changed the camber, I'm sure I've changed the toe. Right there. I'm gonna just gently set these puppies up. Now you can check your back, which we theoretically already set, that we can check again anyway with the measurement device, just to see if there's something really, really wrong. And it appears to be right on. All right, so now you can do the other side. 